The views and opinions expressed on From the Mouths of Madness are that of the panel and not of the Geeks Under the Influence Network or their sponsors. Amazon.com and TeePublic.com. Listeners, beware. Straight from the Mouths of Madness. I'm one of the hosts, Lowdown. With me, as always, is... F. You, Hunter. What's up, you smiley face, mask-wearing bitches? Smiley face, mask-wearing bitches. Yeah. I, I, you know, oh, just... I love Ethan in most of his films, and this just really... This is when I got a new appreciation. That, that honestly. shit, dude. He honestly. was so... Because... He put, like, a new, like, level behind Creepy yeah. in this. So, uh, before we dig in any further, tonight, on the chopping lot, we're going to be talking about 2022's film... Black Phone, and it took me a minute to watch it. I think Hunter had watched it like three months before me. Like, like when it first came when out. When it first I hit Peacock. Peacock. I didn't see it in the theater. <laughs> like, I'll be honest, not a huge amount of interest. It was one of those movies I was like, eh, it just came on streaming. I'll fucking check it out. So, and then I suggested it to you, and I, we, I meandered around, and, well, then, honestly, the biggest thing with Peacock came other, for me. We all had other releases, Hellraiser, shit like that. So, Terrifier 2, Halloween yeah. Ends, like, so, there was tons of shit that, you know. Yeah, I, got, I think I watched it at the end of September, and then all the October shit fucking hit, so. Mm-hmm. And, I gotta tell you, folks, I, from the trailer, you get a lot of the concept, but you don't get the presence that Ethan Hawke brings to this role. Yeah. Like, he has, he, he, his, his actual screen time is very reminiscent of, like, Number Number Street, where he only has, like, I think 15 minutes of screen time. Yeah. The whole movie. But, god damn, every time he's on screen, I'm, like, waiting to see what the fuck he's gonna do. Yeah. Like, I'm watching him, like, like, when you first see him when he kidnaps our main character, he is so, like, like, flighty and soft and, like, oh, could you grab my hat? And, like, He's like acts like he's just be just like just bewildered and oh there's so much going on I'm I'm so dis- uh, very disgruntled soft spoken like you know and he's like I'm just so I'm just so overwhelmed and I need your help and da 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 and then as soon as the kid hands him his hat he just fucking he turns into a, dude looks like a dog like yeah, like, right? like, like, yeah like, like I'm not right. talking to you like what the fuck dude dude where the fuck that and he like shoves that I don't know what. I'm, I don't know what that is. Is that from Outer Hide? Not yeah, from, it's uh, not, uh, like, not from Outer Hide. What's the other? You know the the shit that you used, you used to. God damn it! I'm, it's not from Outer Hide. What I is know. It? See, we aren't we aren't kidnappers, so we don't understand. <laughs> so, the smell, the, they, they're here smell like rag shit. Right? Yeah, like, smell like rag. Yeah, yeah. smell my rag shit. And he like shoves it down their throat with with in, in like enveloped in this fucking now, barrage of black. I will balloons. say, I believe now this takes place in the seventies before it's known. That motherfuckers drive around with fucking rapey vans should be the first. His was a white though. His was a black van, and it said Abracadabra. I understand. He's a magician. But you know what? That bitch rolls around here now. I'm like, uh, officer, you might want to check that fucking sketchy ass van, okay? True. I'm just saying. But this takes place in the '70s, where you know you don't worry about that. You know, like they get up to like eight or nine kids fucking missing. They're still like, you know what, kids, walk home from school. We don't give a fuck. Yeah, literally, there's like seven or eight fucking kids missing at this point when we get to our main character, and. They all let them hang out. Just and keep walking. Just do, Walk to school. Not even that. Walk home. They let them just like hang out until the streetlights come on and shit. I'm like, yeah. wait a minute. There's like I'm kids saying, missing. You get like two kids this today and they're like, do not leave your child out alone. There is a than, curfew. But now it's like, <laughs> damn, we're up to eight kids. All right. Well, hey, watch out. Yeah, exactly. All right? It's your response. If you get kidnapped, it's your fucking fault. You're like, what the fuck? Put some tussing on it. Like, it's just, it's, one of, the, it's just one of those things. They didn't give a fuck. The 70s is like, yeah, that shit's happening. But, you know, uh, that, that, that fed in the 80s, bro. I don't know about your childhood, but like, my childhood was like, streetlights go yeah, home. Like, that yeah, was that was straight up it. Like, but, then, so, Ethan Hawke's character, he's just like, yeah, I guess I keep doing this. No, no, he's doing it in the middle of the day. He's doing it like 4 like o'clock daytime, in the afternoon, bro. Like, daytime. Like, hey, come balls. here, kid. He's got daytime balls. Yeah. That's what I'm calling it. Because In a fucking rabie van. <laughs> in a rabie daytime. Van, daytime balls. Wearing a fucking, fuck, he's, and he doesn't blend in. He's got the fucking crazy hat, the top hat. Well, well, but he's a magician. And so I when, he does, when he does the kidnapping. But he stands out. <laughs> And the cops still no fucking suspect. Like they don't suspicion. They're not suspicious at all on him with this crazy van, always showing up daytime. Kids missing in the same area. Well, so part of that too, I think, is um, going with the time is like neighbors didn't neighbors weren't neighborly 
yeah. to that level. I feel like back, I feel like now if something fucked up happened, like my neighbors would say something. Yeah. But like, hey, this is, this is fucking shit. Back then it was like, oh, they must have had a fight. They were yelling and screaming over there. Like, I, it's not my business. I'm not going to do anything. But like back then, when you if you heard a tussle, I think they just like blind eye like, yeah, kind of shit. I don't really you know? want to involve myself. Four yeah. in the afternoon, bro. Yeah. And, and of course he wasn't wearing his like full blown mask. He just had his face paint on. Yeah, but he still so, looks pretty fucking creepy. Yeah, he's wearing like corpse paint. He's yeah, wearing, like, I'm just saying he looks creepy. He's not blending in. The cops in this town fucking suck ass. All right. And again, I gotta we're not say, talking about one or two kids. I mean, by the time the, our main character gets kidnapped, like eight kids. Yeah. Some shit. There's a fuck ton of, a fuck that, ton of kids. That bottom of that basement. It's packed to the brim. Like, yeah, well, so when they, find the, uh, when they find the basement, so we're jumping a little ahead here, but when they find the basement of the house across the street where he's actually been burying the kids, I think there were seven spots and the seventh was open for him. Yeah, yeah. So there was like a fuckload of kids. Yeah. Within, like, the killer's fucking brother had narrowed it down. <laughs> the coked out motherfucker, which, by the way, when I saw that, that actor was, was awesome. his brother, like, I don't know if you ever watched The Wire. He's in something else though too. But, he's been in Oh yeah, he's uh uh shit. He he's in um he he literally was in something else I saw earlier this year. Motherfucker. Was he the sheriff in Sinister or am I getting that mixed up? He was. Okay. He was a sheriff in Sinister. Because I was yep. gonna say, this is the director of Sinister. Yeah. Something else we covered on the Chopping Block. And um I mean he's done Doctor Strange. He's the only know. connection in Sinister Two to the yeah. first one. Yeah. Is him. But it's yeah, it's yeah. the guy that played the the cop in the Sinister that's the weird brother. But it's so funny because he is the number one suspect oh. because he's so fucking crazy. <laughs> you know what I saw him in recently? I just watched a, a Thanksgiving horror film, uh, Christy. It's on Tubi. We need to check that out. I was going to You need to watch that. that. Yeah, it's a Thanksgiving horror You already horror watched movie. it? I haven't. Okay, I watched it last night. It's a great Thanksgiving. It's, Happy Thanksgiving. It's still Thanksgiving. Yeah. Yeah, Happy Thanksgiving. It's still Thanksgiving weekend. Check out Christy. It's on Tubi. Uh, he plays the groundskeeper all right. Of the college in that film. See, That's what I'm thinking of. I might have to but check that out. I originally this found him. I originally found him in season two of The Wire. He is like the cousin of one of the main characters that works the docks in season two of The Wire. So I've known this actor for a while because season, okay. season two of The Wire came out in like well, oh seven. Apparently, this director must be like his guy. You know how you always yeah. have like there's that 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 actor that you know besides I guess that guy and then Ethan Hawke. I will say this though for Ethan Hawke. Most of the horror movies we've had him in, The Purge, Sinister, Sinister. something like that. He's he plays, crushed it. He plays the, but he plays the, the family man. Like, mm-hmm. you know, protect the family, I'll deal with that, you know, Purge and Sinister. This is the first one where completely different type of character. Oh, God. Like completely. He... Like that edge where he's like, I'm being friendly, I'm being friendly. And, How about and a the soda? fucked up games. Would you like a soda? But the, How about I go get you a soda? But the fucked up games Fucking where he's like, shit. I'm going to leave the door unlocked because we're friends now. Yeah. And he's just standing. Oh, but Naughty Boy. He's the naughty boy. standing at the top. Playing Naughty Boy. Just fucking waiting na- like an <laughs> asshole. Oh, <laughs> no, I no. left the door unlocked. And yeah. he's just like, come on, come on out, come can on I, out. Can I, can I say that, like, he had the mask that was just the top half and it was his actual face be- beneath the bottom half, and then you see him, and it's both, he has, like, the interlocking top and bottom part yeah. where it would change from happy to sad, and when he was waiting up in that on that fucking chair in the kitchen, he'd always have the sad yeah. scowl, and he'd be sitting there with, his, like, his legs spread, shirtless, Just and I'm like, what the fuck, yeah. dude? It's so creepy. This is something where oh. you know, it's like... Wow, this is completely different than the shit I've done before. But but then even his tone of voice, like, there's one point halfway through the film where he comes down and uh, he's like, oh, nothing's going right. It's all going wrong. Like, he's, like, having this own internal struggle. Yeah. And he's like, the guy's like, why don't you just let me go, our our main kid? And he's like, I I was thinking about it. Like, the way he talks and, like... But we all know. There's no fucking way. But he's like, I was kind of actually thinking about well, that. Well, no, but he said, like, uh, you know, I was thinking about it. And he's like, cool, you should totally. I won't, I won't tell anybody. He's like, well, then tell me your name. And the kid fucks up here. Yeah. Doesn't tell him his name. But I think and... it's all games, dude. It's all, I mean, there's no fucking way. Like, yeah, I'll let you go because you're not going to say anything. If you're that fucking kid, the minute you go out to go, black van, creep motherfucker, he's killing kids, all right? Like, but the thing is, he's had the black van. All he has to do is... Like, the, even the kid said, blindfold him, knock him out, stick him in the van, yeah, and take him somewhere and drop him the fuck off. Man, and then you have a scene later where the kid does it. He yeah. gets the fuck out. And you're like, and you're like, 
He's out. Fucking neighbors. And like you brought up earlier, fucking he jumps on him. Neighbors come out. And he's like, he's and like, the, the fucking he he hardcore said, side of me, he's, he's like, say something, I'll fucking slit your throat right yeah. fucking now. He said, I'll fucking gut you like a pig. Yeah, I was like, like, oh, dude, it was hardcore, hard dude. And the neighbors were like, so I, thought hardcore. I, I thought I heard something, but well, never mind. Like, that's it. And, then, like, and it, that was it's the like kids. Both best. sides he of the street. He was out of the fucking house, man. He's like, he's like, make a sound and I'll, squ- I'll gut you like a pig. I'm like, oh, goddamn, bro. That's like bro. the most hardcore he gets is that one right there. Because he's like, you fucking broke the rules. You're a fucking naughty boy. Like, Well, that was what he was waiting for, remember? Because when the kids said, you won't because you haven't played the game like what do you mean naughty boy like that's yeah. what he was waiting for he was waiting for that and can i can we talk about the tension of him trying to figure out which combination it was remember because the kid said yeah here's the numbers and the, he, he repeats back was well, it this is it this or is it this he's like i don't know so he had to try three different sets of God like numbers in one on one combo lock because you know it's six digits, but it could be any any yeah. combination. Like, I don't remember. And, it was uh, like was it like baseball average or something to do with baseball? I can't. Yeah, it was like it was like twenty three thirty seven seven or something like yeah. that. But he was like, was it was it two thirty seven seven? He's like, you're like fucking like, trying shit. to get that shit. <laughs> yeah, there's. I will give that. There's a lot of intense there's moments. There's a lot of intense movie. moments. I'm gonna throw my gripe out there. All right, mm-hmm. I'll throw my gripe out there. There we go. So the the whole gist of the movie is is he's in there. There's his phone. It's unplugged, but it is a vessel to speak to the kids that have already been murdered by him mm-hmm. and help him out, all right? Mm-hmm. So you got your supernatural thing there. Prior to him getting kidnapped, though, we learned that our main character, his sister, has these dreams mm-hmm. where he's she's seen the kids get kidnapped and yeah. things like that. That's the problem I have is, is that the phone aspect, all right, and I knew, knew going into it with the trailer, that was going to happen. I think you don't have to have the psychic little sister because I understand there's a few plot beats that work with that, but it's unnecessary. It's, it's un, in my opinion, unnecessary. You already have the phone. At the end, her psychic ability gets you the Silence of the Lamb trick you moment of them going to the wrong house. Mm-hmm. But that's it. That's the only thing. And you could have had that anyway. You could have. Good call, though. It was a very Silence of the Lambs moment. Yeah, because like, I, like, yeah, yeah. at the very end, the cops bust in. And you're like, here we go. Oh, wrong house. No, now, no. See, what, why I bring that up is because uh, younger viewers who maybe haven't seen Silence of the Lambs, because let's face it, yeah, it's an old film by now. It's 30 years old, oh, roughly. Man. Yes, yeah, yeah, it's old. It's old. Yeah. God damn well, it's it. almost 30 years old. Yeah, almost. So they might not have seen Silence of the Lambs and realize that no, this is dumb. This is this has been done before. So this the, is a new the grand yeah. misdirection, right? Yeah. So they thought it was like many thought it was brand new and black phone. Like, no, hold on, a far superior film, and. I don't care if you love this black phone or not, like a far superior film. Well, plus that Sons first time you watch Sons of Lambs. Oh, dude. And uh, they timed it out so the FBI is at the house, they hit the bell, they then you the hear the thing. buzzer. But you hear the buzzer yeah. at, at uh, Bill's house. Yeah. So you're like, oh, okay. And then the door opens. And it's not till the door opens the reveal that Clarice at the Bill's house, the FBI, is at a, another fucking place. Yeah. And this movie does the same, same thing. Same thing, yeah. Yeah. But, but for them, the, the, the house still they gives them of, something. It was correct in a way because the... It the gives bo- them the, the house kids, where the bodies are at. The kids had spoken to the girl and where they're buried is the house. Unfortunately, across the street is where our main character is in his fucking dungeon, mm-hmm. right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now... That was genius, I've got to say. Like, it seems like you think like the coked out brother is the one who's got the house, and like he's the one that had it all together, and he just like then uh, now he's just like doing a bunch of coke or whatever. Yeah. But no, and like Ethan Hall's character is the one who like had it all. He was like the actually mature. And the cops went to the fucking house. The coked out brother called the cops there, and he's got it all. Like, if you think he's got it right look, here, if you look he's at live right it's here. All here, yeah, he's got the fucking the. But know, they char- discarded him the because Charlie, they saw the, coke on the table. The Charlie, like, the Charlie meme of all the yarn everywhere. Yeah. he's like, I got, I got to figure it out. And they're like, I bet you do, cokehead. Like, yeah, they, give they like shits. completely just like, hey, we're worried about missing kids. You the coke on it's your table. Fine. Yeah, you get enough missing kids, you can just roll out with coke on your table. The cops Fuck like, it. normally Fuck it. we bust the shit out of you. But well, we got, we got missing kids. We got so. a kid problem that keeps happening, so go back to your coke. Now, uh, going back to with the sister, I, I I do understand that it was a lot, but like that was the only way for the arc with the father to work. I feel like they couldn't like they would have had to nix that whole arc with the father if the sister didn't have I don't think it's as important to the movie. I understand it's for character development. Yeah, yeah. But I don't really care. I, I yeah. I'm invested in 
kid trying to figure out how not to get murdered by Ethan Hawke <laughs> and get the fuck out. Yeah. I understand you That's got the backstory like, there. I feel like I if they didn't, didn't really care about that. If, if, and so you're adding another supernatural element to a supernatural movie. One but it ends up element. it ends up being the way reason he gets found. Not because of him. Well, I guess, but... Like, I mean, if he'd have walked out of that house like that, granted, at, at that point, was everyone like was dead. Him. Everyone was dead. Yeah. Everyone was dead. He would have, you know, he would have eventually found everybody, but it was a, it was a very satisfying I, ending. I think he might like, have actually made it to a neighbor's house that gave a fuck, I think, even yeah. if the cops were there. <laughs> By the third house he knocks on, they might get, all right, I guess I'll take you seriously. Weren't you screaming the other night? Like, that kind yeah. of shit. Like, wait, wait, was that you? You, you sound voice familiar. Sounds familiar. Hold on, like, was that you? Fucking 11 o'clock at night, <laughs> fucking asshole kid. Like, and then, like, you well, would give them the idea yeah. of actually what happened. I just, again... Didn't think it was necessary, but I did appreciate the main supernatural thing, which is all the dead kids going, hey, man, watch out for this. Can we talk hey about man. that last kid? Like the metal motherfucker who the was a dick? The hardcore kid? Dude. You know, he got taken out fast because he's like, you better fucking kill me. Yeah. And then he was like, yeah, that's what I'm going to do. I was like, that's what I'm going to do. Like, oh, no. Yeah, oh, yeah. no. Oh, no. Oh. Dude, he but was you know, so that, hardcore, that kid though. kid was like th- two <laughs> hours in and got fucking killed because he's like, you better fucking kill me now. Dude, he was so hardcore. Like, I love it. Because he's, he's even like bitching out our main character. He's like, what the fuck, man? Oh, they do the flashback in the fucking store where someone knocks over. You fuck with me. And he, he like bumped into him while he was getting machine. his high score. Yeah, yeah, yeah he was getting machine. his high score. And he's like, now I'm going machine. to destroy you because my high score just got fucked up. And like, he's the one to kill kids over a fucking... High yeah. score on a pinball. Well, this kid is clearly not. This kid's not, not gonna take well. Not, take like, well to be kidnapped. So yeah. yeah, that's a knife slit like at two minutes. All right. That was that. I thought his character was well. Like they kind of built up the ghosts. Yeah. In that relation, like it made sense that he was the last one. Like well, almost the last one. The second to last one. Like I think the actual last one was. He's his the one friend. not fighting back though. That's the whole thing. Is that he? Was... Well, no, but his other friend who was uh, who was uh, from uh, it was Native American. Yeah. Oh was yeah. Like, was like no, two steps back, swing. Like yeah. teaching him how to like swing the phone when it was packed with dirt. That shit was rad, dude. Yeah. I love that shit. Something... That kid beat the fuck out of somebody at the beginning of the movie. Like and that bad. was the thing I was gonna say that it was kind of unexpected. Is I had a feeling, obviously, it wasn't taking place in modern time because I mean, you know, there's a fucking phone in the basement. But it really had a 70s feel. Like, you know, like like what Stranger Things does, where you just go in there, and that first season of Stranger Things, you're like, oh, this is so fucking 80s. Yeah, yeah. This movie was so fucking, fucking 70s. 70s, dude. Like, it was like a, a fucking Days of Confused fucking kind of setup where everybody, it's just you had that 70s feel. And you stay with the main character. It's like, hold on. Imagine the cops just rolled around and was like, got any of those missing kids in there? No. Know. Be, cool Be a lot did. cooler if you did. Yeah, all right, like, that's all right. what I'm fucking like. You know what I love about little young kids? I kidnap them and they keep getting nice to the same <laughs> age. Like, that's fucked up, dude. <laughs> but but it, that, it, that's it, true. It, it's very 70s. Music, everything. Dude, really, the scenery, like the kitchens, like yeah. all that shit, dude, like that matters in the film. Like, because we grew up with, growing up in the 80s, we grew up with the remnants of the 70s. Yeah. Like, I grew up in apartments that still had. 70s the, the kitchens. Shitty, the like, sh- yeah, was, the wallpaper. Yeah, shit. it was terrible. But that, I, I will say this was unexpected because I had no interest, you know, neither you or me saw in the theater. No. And usually if it's a horror movie. It was a surprise film. It was a surprise film. Yeah. It, was, it was because it really like took, I didn't. It really took just a random night because I hadn't talked to a lot of people that seen it. So it was just kind of like, you know what? It's on. I'm kind of curious about it. Check it out. Yeah, it's on Peacock. It's only streaming on Peacock, folks. So if you have Peacock, uh, if you have at least the first tier of the paid Peacock, uh, then you then you have access to it. You can't have just the basic everyone sign up free Peacock. You have to have the, the first basic. tier of paid where you still have commercials. But the cool thing is they do all the commercials at the beginning of the movie. Yeah, I did. Re- I did notice that. Like they're, they're like, like, hey, they're like here's the ads, and after that you watch ad free. They're cool. like, or or Tubi, and which is like, oh, she's about oh, commercial. No, oh, you like that shit's about to... Oh, come yeah, on. I was watching something earlier, like on Tubi, that uh, well, I, it was, it was last night. It was Christy. Yeah, yeah. And then uh, Blood Rage is another movie, folks. That's Still Thanksgiving Cranberry weekend. Sauce. Blood Rage is on Tubi. I always recommend watching that fun little. Oh man, that movie. uh, movie's we actually fucking... covered that on, on uh, Beautiful Disaster. Because that is a fucking tire fire. Yeah, it is amazing. <laughs> that yes. movie is a tire fire. <laughs> but I, I have to say, man, again, it was not really recommended to me. There was, you know, a little buzz, but not much. Uh, it did so so box office wise, but it was just one of those random. You you know, you just sit there and you're like, I'll check it out. Pleasantly surprised. And that's why, like, I threw yeah. it in your direction. I was like, 
We might want to. You might want to watch it. Maybe. And I eventually did. It took me getting my peacock shit straight uh, to watch it, and then you know I watched it. I was like, oh, f-. like I remember texting. Him, I was like, I, I I enjoyed that movie. Yeah. Like, and again, no hype. I, no, no hype. No hype. I enjoyed that movie, but you know, and what's crazy is I I'm an Ethan Hawke fan. I I really enjoy his films all the way back to like Dead Poet Society. Like, yeah. I think Ethan Hawke is a great actor. He's done a lot of good roles. Um, we mentioned some of his other horror ones, but like he He's is doing, so fucking. This is the first one where I can really think of. I mean, he did play the baddie in um, in Moon Knight recently, yeah, the, yeah. but but it's still very soft. That doesn't count. Yeah, he, most of his roles, he's very kind of like, I, hey, I'm not trying to ruffle anybody's feathers. We got feathers. Training Day. Yeah, well, that's what I'm saying. We've got yeah, Assault trying. on Priest Thirteen remake. Yeah, you know, he, he's he goes hard with some of that. Always shit. kind of. This is the first one where he went that level. I, I like I was saying, when the kid escapes, he's like, oh. Fucking like I, I was like, God damn, Ethan, you got hardcore with that no, shit. See, what, the thing about that scene that got me was the force in which he said the words in the tone he did because he had to be quiet. So he was like very but it's like cold, and he was like, it's no, like he turned I into will, a yeah. fucking demon, like exactly, that, at like what he wanted. Like yeah. he's holding back most of the time, and that time it's like, oh, you fucked up. Now you brought it out. Yeah, you brought him out, but he still had to hold back because. He didn't want the neighbors to hear, so he was like under his breath saying, "Like, if you see him, I will gut you like a fucking yeah. pig." I'm like, I don't know. As I've gotten older, that shit's scarier to me than someone like screaming in my face. Yeah. Like, if you're like so controlled that you can tell me you're gonna gut me like a pig, I'm not gonna. I might not fuck with you. And you know, <laughs> with this record, he yeah. fucking will. He will. Yeah. He will. No. So, uh, Black Phone, Pastor John Block for me. I recommend people watch it. It's fun for what it is. Does it break the mold or anything? No. It just gives you good, like, it's just, content. It's a yeah. good it's, content. It's, just, yeah, it's, it's just, good it's well acting. It's, it's fun. It's well done. Yeah. It doesn't break the mold or anything. It doesn't, really. You know, we already talked me, about... It makes me excited to see maybe Ethan Hawke take on another type of role like that. I mean, it, like, as the evil person. Like, yeah. like you said, because we've seen him in Sinister, and I loved him in Sinister. But again, he was the good guy dad, right? Yeah. He was... Yeah, like but the, part of the reason the why the role, yeah. part of the reason why the movie was so good was because of Ethan Hawke. Like, yeah. let's just be real. Now, as far as the Purge goes, uh, there's there, for me, there's no saving that movie because I just don't like the. I feel like they waste that's the potential. Time, yeah, that's a one time. They watch. wasted potentials with those movies, man. Yeah, that's a one time like, watch. But definitely, uh, definitely, I recommend checking out Black Phone again. It's only streaming on Peacock. Uh, it's if you have if you have Comcast Xfinity, uh, you get the first tier. Uh, free it's right the there. first yep. tier the first paid tier free through comcast so make sure you're taking advantage of that and then you can watch uh you can watch black phone that's how i watched it i thoroughly enjoyed it it kept me going like i had to watch it over two nights just because of timing that's and so funny i, I was excited to watch it i watched like, it over two nights i was exci- i was excited when i you know later the next night to finish watching it like yeah just be- and, and hey folks, our, maybe, our main maybe, character does maybe really watch well it too. two nights maybe yeah. that's maybe that's it <laughs> yeah no, I would have kept watching it if I didn't have to go to sleep. That was that was where it was. Like, and our and our, our main character, the main actor, I, forget, I don't know the kid's name, but he he does a good job. Yeah, he does a good job. Like he he holds it in. And there's that one scene where he finally breaks down when he when like the 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 metal kid, the metal spirit, uh, tells him to break into the freezer, but then he can't get in because you know the freezer is locked from the outside with a double door. Yeah, and he just breaks down. And I'm like I'm like that needed to happen. Yeah. Like he needed the kid hadn't had a breakdown up to that point, and it, it, I feel like if that scene didn't happen, it would have like had a detrimental effect on the movie. The kid had to have a breakdown. Yeah, he had been keeping it together, Sp- thing speaking after thing break, after thing. Right. Speaking of break, I'm kind of shocked that you you aren't fucking with me a little bit on how yeah. our main character takes yeah. out fucking Ethan Hawke's well, character because yeah, yeah. there is a boat breaking scene. There is a boat breaking oh, scene. Oh, God damn it. That's why I didn't, oh, I didn't bring God it up. It. Yeah, I didn't yeah. bring it up. I'm yeah. shocked. I was kept waiting. You know what there wasn't? You, there, you know what there wasn't? There wasn't no, any eyeballs. Yeah, there no, wasn't eyeballs. It was so, a straight brown breaking. I kept waiting as I'm doing this. I'm like, oh, he's going to bring it up. I know he's got to yeah. bring it up. You know why I didn't? Because I didn't have to. Because yeah. you know why? Yeah. <laughs> but I know you're watching it and that should happen. You're like, all right. Yeah. And you knew I already seen it. Every time I watch horror movie, I'm like, yep. Uh huh. Yeah. You know what there's a lot more of in horror movies? Phone breaking. Oh, absolutely. Compared to eyeball fucking. Yeah. But there's some eyeball fucking. There right. is. I mean, with the sadness. Yeah. Straight eyeball fucking. I've been watching, by the way, side, with the sadness, I've been watching uh, people hitting on uh, social media that they've just finally getting to watch that, that movie, and I'm like, oh, man. Oh, yeah. yeah. 
<laughs> oh yeah, no, I still recommend it. So. Oh, totally, totally do. But no, I recommend the. We both recommend the Black Phone. It passed. It's it's a good watch. It's a good watch. I mean, anytime. But it's holiday weekend. Maybe you want your kid to disappear. I don't know what your relationship is. I hope not. But yeah. Eh. <laughs> That's just fucking. Anyway, hit us up at lowdownbrown.guigmail.com. Let us know what you think about the film, if you've already seen it, or if you actually go on Peacock and watch it after this because you dug our review on it and then you you pick it up. It might be something that's going to be cheap in the next few weeks with Black Friday sales. So, you know. Yeah, the Blu ray, 4K. If if I see it cheap, like five or six bucks, I I would own it. I'll probably pick it up. It's a good good movie. Like, flat out, it's a good film. Um, it's not great. Like I said, there's no groundbreaking any, you know, it's, it's, it's a good film. It's worth five to six dollars. Ex- there you there go. There you go. Yep. There you go. Yeah. There you go. Walmart Ben. It's yep. worth Walmart Ben. <laughs> uh, so, like I said, let us know what you think, whether you liked it, you've already seen it, or you watched it afterwards. And we want to hear feedback that you watched it afterwards because you dug our interpretation. Because you gave some spoilers, but there's a lot more in the movie that we didn't talk about. Yeah, there's so much shit. That's- there's so much shit that happens with that phone and him in the basement and, the, and Ethan Hawke and... Yeah, there's tons of stuff that we didn't talk about, so definitely let us know uh, what your feelings were on it. And also go to GUIPodcast.com. We have tons of shows under the network. It's, I mean, outside of horror, there's there's so much content for everybody. But while you're there, also you can go to our links tab. You can click click that, and the first link will be to our Amazon.com link. And if you just click on that, Takes you to Amazon. You, you log in. You shop like normal. It's shopping season. Holiday season's it's coming. It's shopping season. Hey, it's Black it's... Friday, Cyber Monday, bro. Yeah. Black Friday, Cyber Monday, bro. Just bruh. click on the link before you're gonna go on Amazon. We yeah. all know you're going to. Exactly. Just run that coin while you're doing it. Just do that. Run the coin through our website. It gives us even more. And just shop like normal. All you yeah. have to do is log in and shop like normal. We just get some kit back, and it means the world to us, especially during this festive of seasons. But you know what? We're also in that holiday season. Share the love of the GUI network. Exactly. There's another link on there. Oh, yeah, because there's another link. It's, uh, that's T Public. Yeah. On our links page right next to Amazon is T Public. And if you go to that, it's all the designs for all the shows and just a bunch of tangential episode related shit of the GUI podcast. You can get it on and T Public is literally running a sale right now uh, because I just got a text alert. Yesterday. Another sale. Another sale. That's amazing. If you sign up for text alerts, you will always be a- aware of when there's a sale, and they do sales a lot. So right now, t-shirts are going for like 14 bucks. But you get sweatshirts, you get fucking stickers, magnets, tote bags, all kinds of amazing shit. All kinds shit of amazing with shit. The, any design. Great stocking stuffers. If you want, you know, there's so much, so much awesome shit you could do fucking with this. Fucking coffee mugs. Coffee mugs. Yeah. Coffee mugs, yeah. Yeah. When they're on sale, coffee mugs are like 11 bucks. Bam. And there they're really fun designs. Drink some madness. I, I recommend the uh, madness one, obviously. We, we both do. Yeah. But I also recommend the seven words uh, you can't say on television, Carlin mug that we have up there because it's Carlin. And yeah. what the fuck it's is it? Awesome. Like, it's fucking Carlin. So definitely check that out. And uh, I hope you guys have had an amazing uh, holiday weekend. Just got full of turkey. Got your, you know, hope you got your shopping done through our Amazon link and on our Public we'll page. Keep shopping. And just keep on shopping. And uh, until we talk to you again, embrace the madness. In a world with too many reboots and remakes, two men will stop at nothing to make it even worse. Join Mike the Hobbit and Tondi as they play by their own rules while pitching new takes on some of your favorite and least favorite films and TV shows. What podcast would dare to bring this upon the world? This is Smack My Pitch Show. I 
the Hobbit here. Lowdown Brown. Inviting you to check out Geek Some of the Influence, a podcast that pairs booze with conversation with good friends. And a little nerd culture. We get a lot of colorful conversation out of our episodes, but it is here for everyone. No gatekeeping. Always level up everything we do. We'll punch up, never punch down. Exactly. So check out Geeks Under the Influence everywhere you get your podcasts and join us or die. Shut the fuck up, Hobbit. Welcome to GUI Nights. GUI Nights. Yeah, I am Lowdown Brown. With me as always, Mike the Hobbit. This is the tangential side of GUI. This is like so many of those other shows that has the after the show bit mixed with a little bit of Baywatch night, so it's a little sexier. It's a little bit after hours. Uh, also, while tying it into the previous episode of GUI, so look forward to that too, because this comes out the week after the flagship hour-long episode. So make sure to check out GUI nights, and uh, when you're done, you can go the fuck home. My name is Amy Bogard. And I'm Mike the Hobbit. And we are the hosts of Deeply Upsetting, where we use our expertise to answer your most upsetting hypothetical quandaries, such as what non wigged animal deserves wings? And what body part deserves a secret mouth? Which cryptid is the worst roommate? These questions and more that plague you will be answered on Deeply Upsetting, available anywhere you get your podcasts and at GUIPodcast.com. Coming straight from the mouths of madness, I'm Lowdown. I'm F.U. Hunter. Do you love horror? We fucking do. So this is a podcast dedicated to all things in cinematic horror. We're talking movies, television, composers, special effects artists. We're going to fucking cover it. So if you love horror, embrace the madness. Hey guys, Scotty P here with Smash on your left. And we are the Geek Fathers. That's right, bringing all the trials and tribulations of being a geeky parent. So welcome to our world. And as always, join us or cry. In a world of blockbuster movies, there is another dimension. The dimension of schlock cinema. Join us at Beautiful Disasters on a journey into the fringe territory of B-Movie Abandon. We review the flicks that are forgotten or underappreciated to give them a proper place in the annals of celluloid history. I'm the Groots. F you, Hunter. Your guides at Beautiful Disasters. Come along with us for a fun ride. May, May the, the schlock be with you. you.